How about a few 3D printing tips with the Creality CR-10S? Welcome to Hack a Week. So for any of you following me on Twitter, you've uh, seen that I've been posting a few tweets about the soppy robot that I'm building. It's actually a 66% uh, scale of the original, and here's some of the parts here. And uh, there's my list of parts that I gotta print. I've got one part going right now on my Creality CR-10S printer that I just love. It's been a really great printer. Uh, that one is just about finished. So what I want to do today is just give you a few tips that I've learned using the uh, CR-10S. And one of the first mods I did was to put the thing in an enclosure. This is just coral plast. Just built it with um, that and I think I glued it together with some E3000, something like that. Helps keep the heat in there for ABS prints. Keeps them from warping when you have nice ambient heat around everything. The other thing I did was print out some pieces here that uh, serve as supports for the uh, Z braces. That was a big improvement. When it gets up tall, it wants to shake a little bit. I don't really print too many things that are too tall, but this is available on Thingiverse. You just go search for it um, and you'll find it. There's several versions uh, available. I chose this one. It uses 3 8 uh, all thread. So let's um, take a look at the print bed and how I prep it for printing. So this print is done. It's still a little warm. 64 degrees it shows, so it's probably not gonna pull off the bed. Oh, it did. That's what I love about glass. It just pops right off as it cools down. So I use Aquanet Extra Super Hold. Seems to be the best stuff I have found for printing on glass. And the trick that I've discovered is to clean it off in between each print. So it's water-based, really. I mean, you think about it, it's hairspray, and you get in the shower and you just rinse it off. So water-based. So I've just used some window cleaner and spray down the glass really good. Let it sit for just a few seconds. And then I just wipe it with a rag. And I've got a nice fresh surface again. I used to just try to reuse it and add some more, but what happens is it builds up too much of a layer of the hairspray and then it just kind of defeats the purpose. Then it doesn't want to stick very well to the glass. So that's how I do it. Before I do a print, I always go in and turn on all of the temperatures for the nozzle and the bed. This is ABS, so I preset the nozzle to 240. 242 close enough. I put the bed at 100 and let everything warm up. Okay, the hot end is now warmed up. It shows uh, 236 C, so that's warm enough. Another thing I do is keep the nozzle clean of some printing material, be it ABS, PLA, whatever it is you use. Just use a rag and watch your fingers because this is really really hot it will burn the crap out of you but I usually use a rag doubled over and I wipe it clean of anything that could cause a big lump to appear in the middle of the print another thing I do is extrude a bit of material before I print just to clear the extruder out usually before each printing session I'll do a bed level routine and it says bed auto leveling it's not really auto but what it does is take you through a routine so we'll push next step it moves into the first position which is on the corner of the print bed over here I use a two thousandths feeler gauge I like using the feeler gauge better than paper because it's stiffer and I just try to poke it under the nozzle between the glass and the nozzle. And while I'm doing this, so I don't get out of the routine of doing the bed leveling, if I just keep my hand over here on the control knob and I just keep turning it once in a while, counterclockwise or clockwise, it keeps it in this routine rather than defaulting back to the home screen, then you have to start all over again. So anyway, um, what I do is see if I can push that feeler gauge under there. If I can't, then I turn 
the great big thumb wheel that's down here, which is awesome, by the way. It's really huge. Makes it really easy. And we go to the next step. It's going to go to the back left corner. We'll do the same thing there. What I want is to be able to just shove that feeler gauge underneath between the nozzle and the glass. Go to the next corner. And it does this on all four corners. And then it goes to the center. Always before you print, do an auto home command. It has to know where it is before it starts printing. This can cause some crashes if you don't do that. So now we're ready to go for the next print. Other than waiting on a little bit of temperature. This is where I'll put a little bit of hairspray on the bed. That's about all you need. Just a nice little squirt and we're almost up to temperature and we can start the next print. So this is from that last print. This is the brim that was printed on the bed and it's got a nice, even, thin structure to it. So that's when you know you've got the bed leveled out just right. While waiting for that bed to warm up the rest of the way, I'll show you a little thing I do here with these. Um, this is the side that was printed onto the glass. It usually leaves a little bit of an edge when you peel away the brim. I just take a knife and I run it around there and it just takes away that little bit of a lip that's on it. And then sometimes you might have a few little fuzzy spots left over. And uh, I found a nice use for my uh, rework heat gun. If you just run it around here. It will take care of any weird little fuzzies that are coming off from that area. You can also do some minor repairs if you've got a couple spots where you might have had a glitch in the printing. It'll help smooth them out a little bit. Something else I might mention here about the CR-10S, it's a Bowden feed system, so you don't have the whole stepper motor moving back and forth here. All you have is the hot end and a fan. And to load it, there's a release button there. You push the uh, filament through, and then I push it through by hand. There is a routine to load it, but I just push it through by hand until it hits on the hot end, which I usually preheat, and then I just do a extrusion command to make sure that everything's feeding okay. And then I start to print the holder for the spool is over here mounted to the control unit. I just cut a slot in the side of my box here where it goes in and that works out pretty good. So the bed's up to temperature and we've got a print started. Sometimes there won't be anything that comes out until it makes a few passes, starts to get some extrusion going. Always watch this first layer to make sure it's going down good. You can you can kind of tell it just looks like a nice flat layer. That looks like it's going to do just fine. So I'm going to close the box up and let it print. It's a hot day, so the dogs are hanging out in the nice air conditioned shop. Say hi, Sophie. And then Thor is over here in his favorite place, right under my feet. So that's about it. Just a few simple tips and tricks that I've learned and um, this is coming along nicely. This will be in another video at some point. Once I get all the pieces together, we'll talk about it a little bit more. It's a pretty cool uh, Rover robot. It's the Soppy Rover. If you just Google Soppy Rover, you'll find out all about it. It's based on the Curiosity Rover and the open source um, rover project from JPL and then Roger Chang. Uh, did a whole different version where it's all 3D printed pieces. It's all available on GitHub, but we'll talk more about that later. Thanks for watching. Hope you like this one. It's not motorcycles, but hey, it's content. Till next time.